Hey everyone, it's Kristen, and today we're gonna do a little mixed media play, which means I don't exactly know what we're doing, but I am pulling out our Dina Weekly Blue Edition Media Journal. My goal is to actually complete a store-bought journal in my lifetime, and this one is becoming dangerously close. Look at how cool, it's getting chunky, uh, love it. So we're gonna pull out something here, and I have an idea for a background that I've never tried before. So we're gonna do that, as well as create some painted papers. I have a good start here with a piece of paper, actually four pieces of copy paper that have been roughly gessoed on the front and the back. What I mean by roughly is I just slapped it on. So we've got that going. So we're gonna do some painted papers, a really cool background technique. We might not actually complete anything, so if we're looking for resolutions, today might not be the one, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. As always, thanks for coming along. Today we're gonna to begin using a background technique I've actually never tried before. It's a similar technique to using paint and smooshing the pages together, butterfly style, but this time I'm using this really rich and thick modeling paste from the Crafters Workshop. I'm gonna pull one page over the other and then using a brayer, I'm smooshing them together. But what I found when I opened the two is that I smooshed it too much. And as you can see, I've even created a tear there on that beautiful watercolor paper. So I'm gonna go for it again. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that modeling paste. I'm gonna fix the areas that I didn't like. And then I'm going to very quickly <laughs> smush the pages together. I'm using very technical terms here. <laughs> so there, now I have that ridged look that I was originally going for. Next, I'm taking more of the material and I'm just fixing that frame. I don't like the way the blue is showing up. So I'm just adding more of that paste around all of the edges so that I have a really strong, solid surface to work with. Now while I'm waiting for that mound of modeling paste to try, I'm gonna go in with some painted papers. I'm starting with Golden's Teal and I'm adding a lot of water to this acrylic so that I can get some kind of drippy paint going and some flow here. I really do wanna use it kind of like I do with inks in that the water can be added and the colors can flow together. And right now I'm just playing. And I've found that Painted papers for me is where I really play the most. It's where a lot of my discoveries come from. I really let loose even more so than on an art journal page. I know traditionally an art journal is used to figure out ideas, to explore ideas so that you can take them to other projects. But for me, art journaling is a little bit more about expression and completed artworks instead of practicing. So I tend to do that on my painted papers, and I'm just splotching things together. I added a color shift paint in the teal just to see how that with the golden meshed didn't mesh that well in that you can't see a huge difference, but I know in the end you'll be able to see some subtle differences, which in my opinion make the painted papers so much fun. All the little nooks and crannies. Here I've got a little bit more of this liquid acrylic, and I'm just rolling it around with water and seeing what happens. And now I'm taking another gessoed piece of paper, laying it on top. I had a lot of wet material and I didn't want it all to go to waste. So more butterfly action, putting them together, tearing them apart, and this is the results. I love the fact that you've got greens and blues poking out, but they're very similar. So from this point forward, I will use very different techniques on each so that we have something interesting to look at and use on future projects. And that's one of the things that I remember when I'm doing painted papers. They're not gonna be standalone art pieces. They're going to be pieces which I tear up, cut up, use on tags, art journal pages, anything that I'm working on. I'll use little bits and pieces of these papers. So I want little bits and pieces of variety as I work with them. Right now I'm using a crayon that's water soluble just to get some different depth and texture here. And then we'll do something kind of cool. But next we'll let it dry and go on to our next painted paper. 
I'm using a golden product again. This is an acrylic and Indian yellow hue. And I love how light it becomes when you add a lot of water. But I wanted a little pink, so I'm going in with my favorite Bria Reese watercolor ink in pink. And although with the yellow, the pink didn't show up as much, it becomes more of that muted orange, I still know it's there. <laughs> and I'm adding more depth. And again, that's what all of these painted paper explorations are about playing with texture, depth, and color. So I'm gonna go on with that. See, I can add a little bit more because I wanna now make that difference between the two pages that started off so similarly. Now that this first set of painted papers are dry, and look at that cool pattern. That was from a paper towel. I could have left it just there, but I'm not. I'm going in with a Crafters Workshop stencil. I'm going to go back with that really beautiful modeling paste, and I'm going to use this all over the entire paper so that we create these little dots on the surface. Now I'm pulling out my blue and green start. And as you can see, although we used similar colors in various products to create that background, the sheens were very different. And you'll see that come through in the final results. But first, I'm working with this gorgeous, love it, we used it together recently, Jessica Sporn Designs Stencil. And I'm going to take the same modeling paste and do the same thing. The only thing I'll suggest is that when doing this, I try to keep in mind that I do not want the gouges or marks from the palette knife to show through. So you'll see me smooth it back and forth, press that product into the stencil, and frost it like a cake. And for the next painted paper that started off with that similar background, I'm taking a Tim Holtz stencil and again repeating the steps I've done before. This paper is a perfect example of why I'm creating multiple stencils on the same sheet because I will not be using it as a whole. I'll be ripping that up. As a matter of fact, that looks like the perfect shape for a tag to come. So I'm just taking one stencil after the other, and by the time I get to the third stencil, I have so much product left on it, I can use all of that without dipping back in the jar to make my third image. Now back to this guy, which we're going to crumple all up. And don't worry, I'm not throwing it away. But when you crumple up your painted papers, you have created instant depth and dimension. A lot of texture there, which is perfect for adding liquid glitter or any other ink to the surface of because they will settle in all of those little nooks and crannies. And see, we can just see hints of it there. Next on to a water-soluble graphite crayon. I'm actually adding water to the crayon itself instead of coloring it on and then adding water. And as you can see, it makes the product work for me. If I take the side of that crayon, and I could do this of course with charcoal and a brush, but it'll hit all of the tops of those crevices, all of the tops of the hills, and it's gonna create even further depth and dimension. And I really love the way this one turned out. And now back to the dots. As you can see, we keep going back and forth, letting layers dry and then adding more. This time it's with the Dina Wakely Gloss Spray. And I have a question. Let me know in the comments. Do these work for you? I feel like each and every time I go to use them, I have to perform surgery on the nozzle 
to get it to even work. But I do love the color. So I'm adding a little bit of the glitter ink with that. This is going to take many forms before it's done. But next, we're going to go on to this guy that had that Jessica Sporns design stencil. And I want to take a monochromatic approach to this and add some of this beautiful blue ink on top. I think that this is turning out gorgeous. I love the sheen of that green popping through, and it really looks Baroque to me. And now to our Tim Holtz splashes. I'm adding more splashes of my own of a little bit more color. Keep working it until I like it. Good news, our mound of molding paste has now dried and we can start working on the surface. So I'm taking a different kind of ink. This time it's a Jane Davenport mermaid marker and I'm adding these gorgeous colors on top of the surface we already created. Now you may be wondering, why am I adding blue when I just got rid of all the blue? Well, it's a different blue first, <laughs> it's not the denim blue. And secondly, we have all of that lovely texture now that the blue can sit on top of. So I'm just taking the ink, drawing it out with some water, and then I'm going to be adding some other colors to it as well, namely this gorgeous teal. And I will be blending the blue and the teal together. I'll be using more ink on some parts than on other parts so that we continue to have depth, dimension, and interest throughout the page. Now that that side is done, we're going to turn it over on its edge and starting off with a little purple, we're going to add more color. I'm then going to go back into this side with the same colors that I used the first time around and you'll notice when the water is added that the color goes into those grooves we created when we smooshed the two pages together in the first place. So I'm going to go back and forth, add more ink, more water, and then I'll add a little bit of glitter ink to the edge. I'm adding the Bria Reese back into it this time simply because I don't have a mermaid marker in a color that I want. So the Bria Reese has a little bit of that green and blue. And to me, this feels very water-like. It feels like waves. So I'm going to add a little glitter into my waves and eventually take it to the other side as well just so that we have some consistency. Now back to our dotted page. I've decided to take a little bit of the Arteza color shift paint and it's a beautiful paint with a subtle pink shift and I wanted to add it to the raised dots, just the raised dots, but it didn't work. It smushed all around so I had to switch gears and how about just adding a little bit of that color shift to the edges. So I decided to take some with my fingers around the edges and that wasn't really showing up either. So in the spirit of exploration, I gave it all up entirely and pulled out my paintbrush. I'm gonna add that layer all over the surface. And in the end, I liked it. I liked it because it became very ethereal looking and soft and a little different than the way it originally started. But 
We're not done there. Now it's glittery. It has a pink sheen. It has raised dots. It has gloss spray. It has ink and golden paint. I think I have it all. But what it doesn't have is gilding flakes. So we're going to go with it further. Again, only pieces of these papers will be used. So we might as well make those little bitty pieces special. Now in the spirit of redemption, I'm going to try to add just a little bit to the raised edges on this guy. And this time it works a little better. I'm just taking a paintbrush and some of that same glittery blue ink that we used earlier on our background page and just touching it to the surface. Does it fall into some nooks and crannies? Yes, it does. Do I care? No, I don't. But it's going to give us a really beautiful raised effect. And in the end, I think this particular piece of paper looks a little bit like a textile or fabric. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun to work with on future projects. Projects. We're going into some final touches now and I pulled my what I have now called my atlas paper. I think I okay here's my fairy tale paper. You saw the atlas paper. We've got the splashes paper and our Baroque paper. I don't normally name them but here we go. <laughs> We've named them today. But I'm going back and I'm just adding final touches to each. Now don't worry, but one of my final steps here is to cover half of it up. I just didn't love it as it was, so I decided to take some white acrylic paint and a brayer and lightly go over the surface of the paper. And when I did that, I really started to like the results. It's subtle, it's soft, but you can still see all of the color, the pinks popping out, the gold, the shimmer, the shine, it's all still there. But we're going to add a little bit more. Next is some liquid glitter to bring that back just a little bit and then in a moment you'll see me add some chunky glitter to it. I'll have some beautiful bits and pieces from this one page to be able to tear out and use in the future. And now to the splashy page which to be honest I don't really love so I want to add more to it I'm going to add some whimsy with a gel pen and squiggly lines. I'm going to take those throughout the entire background, perfectly imperfect lines, which I think will make it a lot of fun in the end. Now here to that chunky glitter I promised would be our final, final touch, and we're done. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. I know I learned a lot with this experimentation and play, tips and techniques I will use on many projects to come. And in the end, that's what it's all about, right? Thank you again for being with me, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.